The Pokemon anime can sometimes have too much fun where they start referencing all forms of media. Like this literally looks straight out of an episode of Dragon Ball. So I wanted to hunt down most of the hidden references in the series and there were a lot of surprising ones like some series that Pokemon should not even be referencing. So let's take a look at the Alola Pokemon League because there's a lot of them in here and this league is a little different. When we're starting it off it is a battle royale. This is also conveniently around the time where My Hero Academia's tournament arc got super popular so i wouldn't be surprised if they were doing a small reference to that when ash and the gang pull up they scope out the area because they know this is a little different where you're gonna have to be some of the last few trainers standing in this battle royale so they kind of teamed up together and made a secret alliance which i may add is super unfair since these are some of the strongest trainers in the room teaming up to defeat literal fodder kiawe literally takes this a step further by blasting z moves off on pedestrians but hey some of them aren't even trying to hide it since they're using mythical pokemon to defeat some free evolutions. While all this is going on, two trainers are fighting with a Magikarp and a Puky Mewkyu, and they definitely were not serious about winning this. I don't even know why they brought these Pokemon, but an Electro Ball comes out of nowhere. And here we get one of our first of many references. A Pikachu is revealed with a haircut that looks exactly like Baruto's haircut, the son of Naruto. Some of you may be thinking this is a stretch until you realize this Pikachu's name is literally Baruto. And what's even funnier is that they give this Pikachu a custom voice and it sounds like a snarky shonen protagonist. Pikachu. But just like Baruto, this Pikachu was not a threat because he instantly got one-shotted by a Shadow Ball by Jesse's Mimikyu. So I don't know if the Pokemon company is trying to say Baruto's trash, which is why he got one-shotted, but there's their answer. Everyone in Ash's group ends up progressing to the next round to finally have a series of battle throughout the Alola League tournaments, but the references do not stop there. Gladion ends up having his battles throughout the tournaments, and this may not be an official reference, but Gladion's Lycanroc has the aura of Ultra Instinct. Goku, using counter to slow down time and dodge literally everyone's attacks and hit them back harder. He even has multiple scenes where he's charging up his aura like a Super Saiyan, but I don't know. That is not it for Dragon Ball though, since the most obvious references end up happening near the end of the Alola League with Ash vs Professor Kukui. Ash just ended up winning the Alola Pokemon League and is up against an exhibition match against his strongest trainer in the region, Professor Kukui. Now these battles were beautifully animated and had some of my favorite battles throughout the entire Alola season season like Incineroar vs Toro Cat, but that's not where the references come in. It comes when Ash is down to his last Pokemon Pikachu and Professor Kukui is using Tapu Koko. They both weren't able to use any more Z-Moves since they were out of Z-Move energy until Tapu Koko decided to bless everybody and rejuvenate everyone's Z-Move power with the rest of the Tapus. When Tapu Koko and Professor Kukui end up activating their Z-Moves, Tapu Koko transforms into this giant golden Buddha-like statue, which I think is referencing Sengoku. Goku from One Piece since his Devil Fruit makes him do the exact same thing. But then Tapu Koko ends up going on top being the head to pilot this thing, so this is any general reference to any type of mecha. I would put my money on Evangelion or Gurren Lagann, maybe even Kogias, but knowing Japan they're just referencing Gundam. Ash and Pikachu aren't gonna get one up, so they're going ban for ban with Professor Kukui using their ultimate Z moves, and this is where the absolute insanity happens. Pikachu ends up taking the Tapu energy and transforms into Super Saiyan Pikachu. Pikachu jumps into the sky to let off his attacks, and then Ash starts doing Kamehameha along with Pikachu, referencing Goku's signature move, and specifically referencing the scene to father son Kamehameha, where Goku and Gohan combined their energy to use an ultimate Kamehameha. I think it's pretty nice that the Dragon Ball reference happens to be one of the best Pokemon fight scenes with the greatest animation. But with this being one of the final episodes in the Sun and Moon season, let me speed run through some references that happened throughout this entire season because there's a lot of them. In an episode where the gang goes to Pikachu Valley, there's a shiny Pikachu that has the haircut of Kurobara from Yu Yu Hakusho resembling any mob boss from Japan. And to add on to it, the Pikachu's name is literally Boss. In a future episode, Jesse and James are talking about an evil plan and Jesse ends up doing the evil anime a crazy zoomed in face from characters like Pain, like Yagami, Kyurio Shikage. I can't really tell which one specifically they're referencing, so I'm just gonna say she's referencing all of them. Seconds later, in that exact scene, James likes this plant so much he ends up turning into a Super Saiyan, having the aura around him. In an episode where the gang is all playing ping pong, of course they have to reference the manga Ping Pong, where this character known as Ikari is meant to be an homage to a character from the ping pong manga named Kazama. In this same episode, Kiawe ends up striking a pose, which is a blatant reference to Eve 
Evangelion, where Shinji's dad does his iconic meme pose. Speaking of mecha shows, just assume any single time Team Rocket does anything with robots, they are referencing Gundam in some sort of way. There are literally so many Gundam references, I would not be able to catch them all, so my favorite one is in this episode that got banned in the West for obvious reasons, where the Passamon, Pisamon, the monkey Pokemon end up referencing Gundam through this entire scene, just mimicking the sequence, and even the Pokemon make the exact same face. In this episode called Liller and the Staff, the gang is trying to put on a play amongst each other and just have fun, so that means there are tons of references in this episode. One of the best, and my personal second favorite, referencing the entire Pokemon series is where Jessie ends up referencing herself, her voice actor. They do this by having Jessie cosplay as all of her previous characters throughout the years and throughout her entire career. With franchises like Evangelion with Rei, Hello Kitty, Detective Conan with Hybara, and my absolute favorite one, Faye Valentine from Cowboy Bebop. Since Cowboy Bebop is literally one of my favorite animes, and seeing it within Pokemon is an absolute win. Revolutionary Girl Utana is also referenced throughout this episode, with Lily literally recreating one of the scenes. And only in the Japanese version of this episode, at the very end, Rotom is talking to Ash, and he ends up showing him this poster that is literally referencing the first Star Wars movie. With Ash being Luke and Pikachu being Leia, Toro Cat, Lycanroc, and Rowlet are the droids, and in the back, Rotom is literally Darth Vader having the mouthpiece and all. Now, with all that being said, I cannot make a reference video without talking about the reference king, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, because there are a lot of references. One of the more simple yet iconic ones is where Maytang ends up punching a bunch of rocks, obviously referencing Star Platinum doing Aura Aura. All the way back in the first season of the Pokemon anime, Professor Oak is talking about how strong Rhyhorn is, so he ends up cosplaying as Jotaro and punching the Rhyhorn. In another episode of Sun and Moon, when Team Rocket loses, they end up making super detailed JoJo faces, but easily the most popular and most fitting reference of all with JoJo is with Team Rocket. Where in the Pokemon X and Y anime where Ash is facing them, Meowth is plotting and ends up just doing a bunch of JoJo poses. Starting off with Dio's infamous pose, Wari, then referencing Jotaro's pose in one of the covers of the manga, and then referencing Joseph Joestar, the best Joestar signature pose with the hands over his face. With us going over a bunch of Japanese media being referenced, the West did not get left out of this conversation either, because besides Indiana Jones getting referenced in like every series ever, the Pokemon anime devoted an entire episode referencing American superheroes. In the Johto season of the Pokemon anime, in the episode titled The Superhero Secret, Ash and the gang are wandering through the forest, and then they end up getting jumped by a superhero called Gligar Man. And if you cannot immediately tell from his appearance, he is clearly referencing Batman, and he has a little sidekick meant to be Robin. Gligar Man was keeping the forest safe, and even ended up defeating Team Rocket. When he ends up talking to Ash and the gang, he ends up flexing on them by going to the bushes and whipping out a Batmobile and he even goes out of his way to give them a symbol to summon Gligar Man whenever they want, which is literally a symbol of a bat, which is obviously copying the Batman symbol. The cherry on top is that Gligar has a Gligar cave, and he lives in a massive tower just like Bruce. When Ash ends up going to the city and turning on the TV, Gligar Man's commercial starts playing, and his slogan literally says, Look up in the sky, is it a Pidgeotto? A Charizard? A Dragonite? Oh no, wait, it's Gligar Man! Literally referencing Superman blatantly by using his slogan. You know, the, is it a bird? Is it a plane? It's Superman! That whole thing. The absolute funniest thing they did on top of this in this episode is when Ash ends up meeting the true identity to Gligar Man, his name is Mr. Parker, clearly referencing Peter Parker, Spider-Man. And there's even like a Spider-Woman, Batgirl type of thing in this entire episode. And honestly, I wish the Pokemon anime would have made more episodes like this. It was really fun watching this episode just trying to catch every little subtle reference to all the media all in one place. With all that being said and done, there's still one major reference I want to cover which you're probably all thinking about, and no it's not just a bunch more Gundam, it is a reference that was never overtly confirmed, but everybody knows it, the existence of Ash's Greninja. And what would this guy be referencing? Well, Greninja is literally the embodiment of Naruto. When Greninja was a Froakie, he was abandoned all alone, just like Naruto, and what do you know, Froakie also 
had this power deep within him that made him super busted and OP. Two of Greninja's famous and most infamous moves are Shadow Clone Jutsu, I mean Double Team, and Rasen Shuriken, I I'm sorry, Water Shuriken. It was even a meme for like the longest time that Ash's Greninja is literally Naruto with people making a bunch of edits with Greninja and Naruto. Every single time Greninja fought throughout the Kalos League, the fights really felt intense and serious, giving that shonen protagonist vibe. So now that you know who Greninja is referencing, you'd probably want to know how Greninja became one of the strongest Pokemon in his entire universe, and I made an entire video going over Greninja's lore, so click the video on your screen to figure it out.